afternoon. If you all stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance. And we have Spanish translation. I... Esperanza, Esperanza Villegas is with us today. Buenas tardes. Mi nombre es Esperanza Villegas y estoy aquí para traducir. Si alguno de ustedes necesita asistencia, me encuentro en la parte trasera de esta sala. Gracias. Gracias. And we have headsets for the hearing impaired. Um, if you need one, let us know. It's also going to be maybe up on the board if that, no, we'll just let you know. <laughs> you don't have the machine tonight. Okay, this afternoon. Uh, any public comments? This is on items not on the agenda. Yes, we do. It's Marie Chin. Are you, oh, okay. And Ms. Chin, you'll have three minutes. Yes. And I'll give you a 30 second warning. Thank you. Um, president, Vice President, the member of the school board, Dr. Sarvis and the rest of the team, hi. My name is Marie Chin. I'm here today to ask you to consider one issue, and the issue is allowing Mandarin Chinese to be taught at the Santa Barbara School District for the year 2008 and 2009. In the email, SBSD email dated April 30th, 2007 states, Mandarin Chinese is to be offered in the 2007-2008 in the Santa Barbara School Districts. Nationally teaching Mandarin Chinese is growing in popularity. Finding teachers in this particular subject is expected to be difficult. If there is insufficient interest at the time, then the program will be offered in 2008-2009. Is there sufficient student interest? At San Marcos this past year, six, over 64 students have signed up to want to, to learn Ch Mandarin Chinese. Yes, there is sufficient interest. Unfortunately, they were told they have to pick another language. Because of this email, I took the Chinese CSAT and passed it this past last November. I also applied it for a grant. I received a $2,000 grant, the Unsung Heroes Award, to help pay for Chinese textbook. And I might also receive $5,000, $10,000, or $25,000 award that will further and help pay for my salary. And the information is stated in your packet that I've put on your desk. Unfortunately, the reply from Associate Superintendent Data yesterday was this. Unfortunately, we cannot offer you a position at this time. We had to lay off teachers this year, so we are not in a position to add new language courses. My question to the board is this. When are we are in a position to offer Mandarin Chinese courses? We lay off teachers every year. We'll always have problem in funding and short of funds. I found funding to help teach Chinese. I'm committed wholeheartedly in teaching because I believe all children deserve um, the access and the chance to learn and to explore their full potential and give all the tools to help them succeed in the 21st century. My fellow teacher, Errol Burrell, says in this email to me, there is nothing more important to the success of our student in the Santa Barbara School District than to be able to tackle the challenge of the language of the 21st century with such an able and skilled teacher like Marie Chin. I know I'm a good teacher. This is not the issue. The issue is what is the best interest and the best for the students here at Santa Barbara? Um, will we let money dictate how we care and teach our students? Perhaps by next month, a position will be opened within social study, which is my original um, credential. Think of me. Um, I believe in public education. I have done all I can to advocate. I care about students. I model them. Um, I teach them. And they're very important to me. I chose to come before you, the board, and ask for your help. Please consider the following issue of allowing Mandarin Chinese to be taught at the Santa Barbara School District for next year. Thank you. Thank you. May I make just a brief Please. comment? We would love to offer Mandarin Chinese courses. We wanted to do it beginning this year. We did lay teachers off, and we anticipate doing it beginning the, the following school year, fall of, of 2009. I thought a class was offered this year, and it didn't last the year. Is that what? Uh, well, we did, uh, you know, without going too much into the history of it, we did start this last year with a course, and um, we had a lot of students drop out of the course. And I, I can tell you more about it later. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, consent agenda. Do I hear a motion? I'd like to alert you to the. Oh, there's on the revisions up here. On item D one. 
which is a revision in the recommendation to approve a contract award to Pat McCarthy Construction for La Cuesta Continuation High School Modernization. Move to approve. Second. Um, okay, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? It passes four with one absent. Bob Noel is absent. Again, we're getting lots of bids. Looks good. Okay, um, action agenda, and that's our two expulsions. In case uh, 0708-85, move to uphold uh, the stipulated agreement. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? It passes 4-0 with one absent. That was Carter and, I'm sorry, Carter, Cardero and Carter. Uh, <laughs> in uh, case <laughs> yeah. 07 08-88, move to uphold the stipulated agreement. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? It passes 4-0 with one absent. If I could pass this down, maybe that will help her. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, now we're on to our main event, uh, the board workshop. Um, and this is a discussion of revision of the district mission statement and board focus goals. And we, uh, it's written here that we're going to spend about an hour. Sounds good. Um, <laughs> so let's do that. I guess we should start with the mission statement. Does that sound like a plan? I'm, I'm willing to entertain any process kind of um, ideas here if anyone wants to make any recommendations to how to go about this. There's anything? Starting with the mission statement seems reasonable to me okay um, and I just had a question when we talk about the district does is that inclusive of the board or is the board considered an overseer outside of the district in in general it's inclusive okay yeah, yes. that's okay that's so we are considered an integral part of the entire system Right. Okay. So when so I was thinking there it would, might be helpful to include in some of the in the first shared value and the last shared value where we list sort of the the groups that we're including that we should have some language that would include the board because we have. Uh, students, parents, staff, and the community. Who's included in we? Well, except that, that it, which is we believe that the achievement of the district's mission is, share, is a shared responsibility among these people. Right. But it, the, the, that doesn't seem to me to include the board. When I was, when I was working on it with you, I assumed we included the board. I, I understand what you're saying, but but what I, the point that I'm making is the way that it's stated. Even if we includes the board, it's saying we believe that the mission is among these other groups, and the groups that are listed don't include the board. Okay. Um, and I had kind of when we because I was drafting this with you, I had sort of had that in mind too. But when I was reading it again, I realized that we had sort of left the board out of that list. So. I'm wondering if, uh, if other Just, fellow yeah, board I'm members would, when I, but I didn't know, I, so I was thinking um, a shared responsibility requiring the cooperation and commitment of students, parents, staff, board members, and the community. So do teachers come under staff? Yes. Yes. And I would assume all administrators, all classified mm -hmm. staff come under staff. Mm -hmm. Um, and the same thing would be true in the last one. Respect among students, parents, staff, board members, and community members. Mm -hmm. Okay. Can we go back to the, f the first part of this mission statement, the, the first sentence? I'm, 
I got a little hung up on educational success and how that differs from academic success. And I went to the dictionary and could not find kind of differences, except that when you come down to the second board thing here, it says we will ensure academic excellence. And so as providing educational programs, so it becomes educational is kind of a subset of academic. I'm a little confused as to the difference and whether I, there is I would include educational. I, I would include academic under the subset of educational. Acad it would be that the educational is bigger. Yes. yes. It includes the academic component. It includes the social emotional component. Um, you know, okay. in other words. Behavioral. Be yeah. Okay. I, I'll go with that. It was really hard to tell from the dictionary. And, but then, we will ensure academic ed by providing quality educational programs. I'm a little hung up with that then, how that fits together, but. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm ready to start chiming. I don't know how many other ones that you have to. No, my, my bigger point was only, I was gonna say was, I really like the first part. The second, the shared values, it seems like we could add on to them many things, things that are kind of little pieces that are not there. And I'm just wondering whether we want to spend our time and effort on that or just stay with the first sentence, the first part. I guess I, guess I would ask, I mean, we sat looking at this for, for both on our own and together for, for quite some time. And I think that we were, when we were talking about the, the shared values, and other districts call them other things, you know, core principles, shared values. I mean, there's any number of names that have been given to them. We were looking at the uh, major components of what makes a good school district. And yeah, you could make a pretty exhaustive list, but I would, I, at least I think, when we were organizing this, we organized it so that it would subsume other items. I guess, do you have an example of something that oh, you would want I've, to include that isn't covered? That I've, might I be listed, an easier way to go at it. I listed a couple, you know, sort of environmental stuff, um, special needs. But is that not school environment? Mm -hmm. It's a facilities thing. It's a, it's a little bit, a little bit of each. You're right. There are little pieces of this here. Yeah, maybe it is a school environment. Okay, special needs. I guess, I guess those kinds of those are the kinds of particulars that I would then look to the board focus goals to be addressing. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I just want to. Can I try one more technology? <laughs> well, <laughs> and you're doing fine so far. What what I was trying to do, and I'll I'll see if we can tie in together here a bit, is that I looked back at the strategic plan and tried to see how do the share fa values tie in with the core values of the strategic plan, and, and where there's a few gaps there, and so I have some suggestions for shared values. Uh, based on the core values of the strategic plan. And um, for that, for the second one, uh, th there were a few uh, things that weren't included that I thought should be included in the shared values. And that's for the second line, we will ensure academic excellence. Um, I thought to include the technology aspect that's in the core values, we could say we will ensure academic excellence in an increasingly technological society, which is straight language from the core values, insert that, and then by providing quality educational that continues stat. Can you say that again? So it sounds like this. We will ensure academic excellence in an increasingly technological society by providing quality educational programs with all staff members focused on continually improving student achievement. Although I kind of feel like there should be a comma after that programs. What do you think, Ms. Cordero? Uh, I think you put the comma in there. Um, I'm, I guess, a little concerned. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm a little, cons I guess I'm a little bit concerned about emphasizing the, the technology technological point. aspect of society versus other aspects of society that mm -hmm. we would want to educate students around as well. Um, because I think adding just the word techno technological there um, tends to elevate the, that, the importance of technology mm -hmm. over some of the other aspects that we haven't overtly mentioned. And I would say, for example, what we say up in the, yeah. 
in the original draft uh, mission statement um, diverse and changing mm -hmm. I guess in, in our core values for the strategic plan, uh -huh. technology as a whole is one of the separate line items that I don't know if we want to include here, but it is included as a well, core value. Well, I don't, I don't mind including mm. it. I, I mean, I would almost want to have a separate maybe statement about it we could have so it, that yeah. it doesn't... I just don't want this list to get too long. Yeah, I don't either. I, I don't but know. we could say in an increasingly technological and diverse well, I have a separate Society. suggestion for diverse because that's okay. coming. But maybe look through but and I see if there's another place that you think technology could be okay. added and see what you think. I want to go ahead and, and make the other suggestions and then you guys can chime okay. in. Can okay. I respond to yeah. that one, though? Yeah. I, I guess I would prefer not to include it. Mm -hmm. And it's because I think that changing world does reflect that. But also I think we need to put this in a context when that when the uh, plan was being put together, the strategic plan. It was in 96, 97, it was in that time frame. And the high schools were just on the verge of struggling to get digital high money. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, technology was new. Uses of technology were new. The county was struggling on how to provide in-servicing for teachers to even learn how to use computers. Uh, I, don't, I think that's, has it gone by the wayside, the level one, the level two, the level three? Okay, but you know, and, yeah, and we assess, but and, and there's no I'm, money. I almost <laughs> wonder if we're at the point where it goes without saying. Mm -hmm. And I don't, I just throw that out there. Okay, it could be. Um, the two other things that from the strategic plan that I really do think are important to, to mm -hmm. uh, include in the shared values one was about diversity, and that's mm -hmm. not in the shared value. So I would suggest on the last line where it says we will promote a culture of mutual trust and respect among students that we might think about changing it to we will promote diverse schools and classrooms through a culture of mutual trust, respect, and high expectations among students, parents, staff, and community members. We will promote diverse schools and classrooms? We will promote diverse schools and classrooms through a culture of mutual trust schools? We, respect. Do we promote diverse schools and classrooms? Well, I would like us to. We, we, yeah, I'd like we, it to. Do I we? think that's a, a, <laughs> we a ever shared about value. That? Well, we do talk about it regularly um, in terms of making sure that all of our students have access to every level of course, um, including our highest level of courses. And I think that that's an issue that, that needs to be addressed, the fact that we have schools where they may say that they're uh, diverse when you look at the broader statistic, but that's not what's going on in individual classrooms. So, oh, I thought you were promoting that we would, if one school is less diverse than another, that we com we mix them up I'm, a little more. No, I'm not saying that we're, um, and I don't think this implies that we're going to move towards any sort of uh, uh, enforced system, but um, that. That's our, our goal is for us to have diverse schools and classrooms. Um, and, and, diverse doesn't and diversity doesn't just mean ethnic diversity. Right. It means all kinds of diversity, which we tend to want to promote in our schools. The, and I, I, I really like that, mm -hmm. but it changes that goal. It changes the, the uh, effect of that goal, of that um, value. So I'm wondering if we still need to have something that says that even if we sh even if we had very diverse schools, or even if we didn't have very diverse schools, we would still be promoting respect. Mm -hmm. um, because it the, the 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 very subtle difference is that, and I and I like them both. Um, the very subtle difference is that with your change, it says our emphasis is, is on promoting diversity. Mm -hmm. And originally it was on promoting respect. Mm -hmm. um, and so I don't want, and trust, and so I don't want to lose that part of it. Mm -hmm. um, but I would perfect, be perfectly happy to retain the part that you added. And, mm -hmm. and actually, I, I have to chime in, uh, because when we were looking at that, we were thinking a lot about um, communication issues. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I can throw something out there. You can say we will promote a culture of mutual trust and respect, and then you can say through diverse classroom, through diverse schools and classrooms. But it really gets away from 
the idea of of uh, communication, good commu routes of communication, top down and bottom up. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's really, I think, what we were. Looking yeah. I'm I'm I'm, wondering I'm with you that I don't want to have too many of these, right. but um, <laughs> but I would rather almost see your addition as a separate value, because I think it's equally important. I mean, mm -hmm. to main, to have diversity in the classroom and in the schools, but it's also important to promote this culture of. Uh, trust and respect. Mm -hmm. Can I can I get back to? Uh, I'm not. I'm I'm wondering if we should be examining something like that in the context of the focus goals. I actually think that it's that needs to be on the shared value level. Um, mm -hmm. That something. It's. I mean, right now we have it as understanding and respect diversity. Right. And and I don't want it to go away from something that's right out in front of us. Okay. I kind of agree with you. Okay. That was one of the areas that I was mm -hmm. putting this on. Um, that was one of the areas that I w had sort of mixed feelings about too. Mm -hmm. Would you would you object to having it as a separate No, one? but I'm not quite sure how to word it. Um, we will provide professional instruction. Um, I like the. Um, no, I, I, I think that that understand and respect diversity has been subsumed into um, productive citizens in a diverse and changing world. Mm -hmm. I think uh, Kate is talking about actually uh, uh, showcasing, uh, promoting uh, diverse schools and classrooms. I'm wondering if we're kind of modeling the, the, the second to the last one, we will maintain, if we said something like we will maintain um, diverse. But we don't have them. OK, you're right. <laughs> Let's say <laughs> we will promote. Yeah, promote. And that's fine to use that again. We will promote. We will promote diverse schools diversity in and classrooms. Diversity in schools and classrooms? or diverse schools and classrooms yeah I would I would really want like to make one of the reasons why I'd like to have this be a separate item is I'd really like to make sure that it um, encompasses not only our students but our staff mm -hmm. and also and I, guess I think we could do that with just schools and classrooms yeah. um, I guess I would also like to add diversity of all kinds or something that yes. indicates other than ethnic diversity exactly. could be socioeconomic it could sure. be uh, a number of different things but I think anybody taking a quick look at it would walk away with a, a just ethnic just ethnic diversity so um, do you have a better word or a, an, an adjective to add to it Other than diversity of all kinds, I don't, mm -hmm. you know. I <laughs> well, I was going to say diverse means of all kinds. Yeah, We're being it, redundant. I, I it, it, it is, but. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, the, uh, the other thing that, though, is that I don't want to get away, f I mean, I, I want to be inclusive, but I don't want to uh, be a, get away from the issue of cultural diversity as well, because, um, one of the things we're seeking to have is schools that are more ethnically diverse. Mm -hmm. um, and I wouldn't want us to say we've achieved our goal because we're div that school is diverse in some other way. Mm -hmm. um, but it's but we haven't achieved it, uh, sort of an ethnic diversity. I, would, I mean, we'd want it to be like diverse in lots of other ways as well. Mm -hmm. But I wouldn't want to lose it, the. Anyways, I have what, what I thought you had said. We will promote diverse schools and classrooms. Mm -hmm. Through. Um, well, I thought we, uh, that through or that. I mean, that's not quite, I don't think that's quite clear enough okay. um, in terms of. How about to foster an appreciation of. 
cultural, socioeconomic, and religious varying cultural, socioeconomic, and religious backgrounds. If you say group, you're talking about a focus school, right? To foster what was the rest of your because oh, it was respect nice. Respect and understanding. Respect and understanding. What is that? What you said? No. no. You were saying to foster, just straight on cultural, socioeconomic, and religious. Oh, to foster cultural. cultural. And appreciation policy. Soci You could make a long list. Yeah, you can make a long <laughs> list. Well, interest. We've got a lot of programs that mm -hmm. strike at different interests. What did you say? Cultural, socioeconomic, religious. I don't know if we should go into this list, actually, now that I think about it. <laughs> to foster, and especially since we really, I, I still say we haven't really dealt with some of these. And I'm not sure we're planning on it. Well, see, that's we'll the her schools <laughs> classroom to foster an appreciation of differences. Maybe. This is just a draft that we're working on, so we might be able to come up with some tighter language than yeah. a. Mm -hmm. That's a good start, though. Mm -hmm. Of differences, and it's not just an appreciation of differences, it's also for all, so all students to have access. Um, so I guess I feel I feel like we're making a list of something that's already expressed here. That's kind of how I feel. I just don't think it's explicit enough. Okay. okay. Well, well turning this off. I don't I should just leave it leave on. It on. Leave it on. Um, I'm wondering, the, when we say to foster, I, the reason for promoting diverse schools and classrooms is to create better learning environments for students, right? I mean, how about this? students have access. Or is it about the students' understanding of, of each other and the respect for each other? Well, I, I'm including that as a better learning environment, but we could maybe. How about something like this? We will promote diverse schools and classrooms to foster um, understanding and provide, um, sorry, to foster understanding and create better learning environments for all students. I would just say to create better learning environments. To create, okay, to create. We will promote diverse schools and classrooms to create better learning environments for all students. I would think that would be even more important. Yes, if you have language that you can <laughs> suggest, it's hard well, to do this I, right I was here just now. To you, actually, yeah. And, and I had jotted That's down cool. to ensure equal access well, for all students. Can I make a suggestion? Oh, to ensure equal access for all students. Can I make a suggestion? Uh -huh. <coughs> in, in yet another direction. Yeah. Yeah. Just very different. Um, that, I like that. Obviously, we're go we're going to be coming back to this. Right. That we move on at this yes. point. That right. we leave it to Kate mm -hmm. and to Annette to wordsmith their suggestion. It sounds like, Dr. Right. Sarvis, you might have a suggestion as well, that people wordsmith them separately, and then when we come back together, we can look at the three different drafts okay. of that particular uh, expression of that particular value. The one other value that we may want to put in here that's straight from the strategic plan is we will teach students to balance individual interests and civic responsibilities. I don't know if you feel like that needs to be uh, something separate, but that is separate in the strategic plan. Um, I feel like, once again, we're back at naming things that are in the mission statement, okay. where it says responsible, well, ethical. ethical, and productive citizens. Okay. And we, pr we, in particular, mm -hmm. chose that word citizens because that's what you want. I mean, that's part of the package that you want when a student graduates from high school. They're mm -hmm. going to be engaged in their community. They're going to want to vote on issues, mm -hmm. become informed, etc. So I think that was. And, and I always have a, a, a sort of small concern here, or maybe it's not so small, um, 
because we tend we use the word citizens in two different ways we use it to mean people who actually have citizenship mm -hmm. and we also use it to mean people who participate in a society in a, in a broader society um and so I, I i hope there's a way to make it clear that in our mission statement we're using it in the broadest interpretation well, could you change it to responsible, ethical, and productive members of a diverse and changing world? I would be happy to do that. That sounds mm -hmm. great. Mm -hmm. I would prefer citizens. Yeah. And I, and I don't mean it in the legal sense. Mm -hmm. I think it, it, it's a word that expresses active participation in the community. I do think that it has a, a meaning of participation mm -hmm. more than member does. Mm -hmm. I'm, I just don't know. know if it's subject to misinterpretation. Mm -hmm. So that may well, be something we want to contemplate why as I'm well. Not, I'm not that worried about it is because it doesn't say, I mean, everybody's a citizen someplace. And <laughs> it says ethical and productive citizens in a diverse and changing world, as okay. opposed to okay. here. I so um, I think that's not why, I think that's why it, it can work. Um, my one, thing that I'm struggling a little bit with the mission statement is the mission of the Santa Barbara School Districts is that phrase to maintain high expectations and a commitment to excellence in order to ensure just for me I feel like it's more it's simply to ensure ed educational excellence or educational success for all students rather than the mission is to maintain high expectations I'm, I'm that is just a little uncomfortable for me You, could you say that again, the way you like it? <laughs> I don't have a way I like it. I mean, what I felt like was the, the, the little clause to maintain high expectations and a commitment to excellence in order is... Um, in order to make the, 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 the focus on education. Yes. We, yes. we think uh, this is a useful quandary because mm -hmm. uh, the first part, the first phrase is sort of process oriented rather than results oriented mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. what we want to ensure is really the result mm -hmm. although we like the process mm -hmm. how about uh, you can you can reverse it you can say uh, the mission is to ensure the educa educational success of all students through high expectations and a commitment to excellence and to empower them to reach their full potential. That works better for me. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm, I'm fine with it. It makes sense. I also, uh, I sort of, I, I also wonder if we actually, if we actually do need it. Mm -hmm. Is it possible to ensure educational success and empower students without having high expectations and a commitment to excellence? Well, in the shared values, there's a referral to academic excellence and quality educational programs. Um, so we want to keep it in there? Well, I, I'm almost feeling like you don't need to keep it in there because oh, it's, okay. it's, it, it's expressed in the shared values. But, but I don't know, because a lot of people aren't going to look at the shared values. They're just going to look mm -hmm. at the mission statement. Mm -hmm. And when we have whatever we have up here, I don't know if it's just going to be the mission statement. In which case, I think we may need to include it. I, I, I also, I ha just on a, a purely personal note, when I was, you know, working with Annette to draft the mission statement, we were looking at other mission statements. I really looked <laughs> at it as not only, um, uh, you know, something to strive for, but also, is it something that I want to be able to invest myself in? particularly when someone is standing at the podium reading me our <laughs> mission statement. Mm -hmm. And so I, I really think that having high expectations and commitment to excellence should be included somewhere in the mission statement. It's, it's certainly something I would want to be associated with. Okay. Mm -hmm. Can you read again uh, your, the way you would change it? Um, the mission of the Santa Barbara School Districts yeah. is to ensure the educational success of all students through high expectations and a commitment to excellence and to empower them to reach their full potential as responsible, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. It's 
sounds good to me. Okay, we're ready to move on then. Sort of. Uh, I don't know. Oh, um, uh, Ms. Be Before we do move on, may I draw your attention to a couple of pages uh, in in this packet? You have the board policy 000, which is on the mission, and on the back of that, you have an exhibit on the mission statement, which is how we will show this. You you see that exhibit, mm -hmm. which is how we'll show this in our board policies. And my question is. Um, it's pretty obvious that we would show the mission statement in this section. Would you just side heading then the uh, shared values and list the shared values under? Okay, underneath. Okay, good. Thank you. Okay. I just have a quick question. I'm, I'm trying to call up what um, our uh, website looks like. Is there a spot to click to see the mission statement and the board focus goals right off the bat, or do you have to delve into board of education and all that kind of oh, stuff? Gosh. I don't. I think, I don't think there on, is. I think you have to click on board of education. Board, yeah. I'm not yeah. sure. And then, well, so, and we, then it does. Yeah, but we, I'm not even we sure. We should have it right goals. up front. Now, yeah. I, I would agree with that. Yeah. That I mean, way I won't have to run in and look at the board. I, you know what? I, I'm thinking about every time I want to look at the board focus goals, I'm pretty sure that you have to go through that route to get there. So on something like this in our meet, on our board here, would we have all these shared values as well or just the mission statement? That's the mission statement. statement. Right. Okay. But you could post them either, uh, you know, on the bulletin board somewhere or in the outer office when you enter the building? Hmm? We, we have plenty of wall spaces. Yeah. <laughs> we can put two of them. <laughs> okay. And we don't have any public comment or anything like that on this. No. Okay. Okay, let's go on to goals. Does, before we start, is there something anybody wants to? Well, you do. I can see. <laughs> we do have a number of uh, materials that are included, and uh, I, I brought along some other information. We have our LEAP document here. Uh, not Good. that we think we should, we should rewrite the LEAP document as our board focus goals, uh, but there should be a lot of parallel between the LEAP and the board focus goals. I also have, did we get the staff demographics into the last board brief? No. Or they just didn't make it into the board brief? Okay. Uh, actually, they look better than they have in the past. Mm -hmm. And we'll make do sure that I do have them. Some improvement in each area. Not a great improvement, but Sorry. as we know with things like, uh, like student enrollments, these things are incremental. They're all the same. There's one for each of us. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Do you have other things that you'd like to? Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Um, I did mention at the last board meeting that I was going to provide you with the matrix that Cynthia White put together and then drop in some of our SMART goals from the LEAPS. And I'll just show you, I have one copy of what she did, and I think it's really valuable work for looking at how our LEAP plans coordinate between secondary and, and elementary. But then in preparing for today, I thought, I started looking at the SMART goals, and I thought, this is so specific. It's way more specific than what we need for board focus goals. So then from the LEAP, I th this, this is also very specific, but I'm going to pass down just to have in front of you. From the very front, the key findings indicate the pieces in which the, the big issues, and they really emphasize the, um, that academic program survey, which our main goal for the English language arts and the math, which are the two huge big goals in LEAP and the focus of the academic program, are to implement the essential program components, those EPCs. And so that's what this findings piece 
puts together and it's you know it's having the coherent curriculum it's having the time set aside the appropriate time it's having the monitoring system you know frequent assessments all of that kind of stuff so this this is something to look at it's again specific and then also the professional development five-year plan there are goals on here they're again fairly specific but the idea that we have a district-wide system of common assessments you know those kinds of things for monitoring our growth so I'm just going to pass um, both of these packets down just for information to have in front of you but I do believe they're fairly detailed but are the underneath pieces the foundation of what our board, board focus goals would be particularly around student achievement which is I guess what we're all about here <laughs> Ms. Parker, you emailed us some samples which were enlightening. Yeah. Um, I don't know if everybody had a chance or whether you've you've made copies or any. I a didn't. Copy I of don't. It. You, did, did you get a chance to take a look at those? I hoped so. Um, I have one set of them. Yeah, and I brought one. I brought a few here too, but I was I was hoping that we'd all looked at them. What I really saw was that if you adopt these annually, they can be quite targeted, mm -hmm. and they need to be adopted annually. And I'm, one of my questions for today is what are we adopting? Are we ab adopting the 0809 <laughs> focus goals or the 0910 focus goals? I'm assuming we're trying to do something for 0809 since we don't have anything in place, but we can't affect the budget in any way or, or make any larger um, changes at this point. May, may I address mm -hmm. some of that? Um, we will re be reporting site by site and district wide on uh, on board focus goals from the past, and, and we use a, a sheet like this. And we would hope that they'd be quite targeted. And what we'll be for well after we report this in the fall, uh, we'll be formatting a similar looking sheet for the following year. Mm -hmm. So the sites are looking at those goals for the year for this next year, uh, 08, 09, and reporting on them at the end of that year. If, if I could make a bold suggestion, because these are called, well, we've removed the, the name annual, annual, but it used to say annual focus <laughs> goals. Can we put and that back And then it's dated in? May 2006, and Ms. Parker's been on the board for almost two years now, and we've mm -hmm. never addressed them with Ms. Parker present. Um, I'm wondering if we could, um, memor uh, you know, institutionalize a meeting, a particular month, every year just like we have our December organizational meeting that, do that. and yeah. the question is where to place it obviously summertime is very attractive um, because there's a little more time to do things like that but uh, January February would really be optimal because then you can be looking toward the budget calendar budget. Mm -hmm. and I'm wondering if even that is a little too late Mr. Smith maybe you can address that does it need to be something that's done in the late fall so that if we have goals that we're setting then the superintendent and the associate superintendent can be thinking of ways to implement that the administrators and teachers can be thinking of ways to implement that and then and then address it in terms of the budget I think as you've heard me say before things that get measured get results and so what you'd want to do is have that solidified in the fall sometime because generally we present the budget calendar in December since the process starts in January and that gives the board an opportunity to embed milestones in the budget development calendar to say hey where are we are we on task so I think probably to solidify what the board focus goals are in the fall with that in mind. I'm, I'm wondering about, well, also in the fall is we usually have all of our data back from the previous year's testing by August or September. I'm wondering about uh, uh, an October or November meeting to put together draft focus goals and then to formally adopt them in January after there's been uh, more uh, budget feedback. Mm -hmm. That might be, that sounds like a good idea. And also, exactly. if we are not what I'm hoping is that we may not spend um, dozens of hours on single plan presentations this coming fall. And if we don't do right. that, maybe we can spend some of those hours working right. on uh, the 0910 focus goals. We just had a, oh, go ahead. I was just gonna say, I, I, um, I'd actually like to see us adopt the focus goals before our budget 
development is completed because I think our budget, our d focus goals should drive the budget rather than the budget determining the f goals. Exactly, and I think that's what we're saying because if we adopt it in January, that's just the beginning of the budget process because right. that, that will start to end. I'm sorry, I thought, you s I thought I misunderstood you then. I thought we I heard you say. We would have some budget information, okay. but we wouldn't have adopted a budget. We okay. would have started the process I was of thinking, a budget. I'm sorry, I thought you, I had heard you say no. we wouldn't so adopt them until after. Okay. So we're actually early. No, we're late. <laughs> we're extremely late right we're now. Late now. <laughs> but we will be early we, next year. Yeah. It would be fall. an anticipation of adopting a budget. In other words, you formal you yeah. formally adopt your goals and the goals would be driving the budget process. It's just sort of a little bit odd in that um, it doesn't work with the election cycle because you're gonna have different people perhaps in the fall working on this and then you're you're saying to adopt it in January when you again ha may have different people. Well, that will happen every other year, yeah. every single time you go out to yeah. do this. And to, I, I mean, I think to suggest, I, I think that the first year that someone's on the board, they're gonna be taking the lead of the more senior board members regardless in this kind of a process. They're going to be looking to staff for some more direction. Mm -hmm. um, and, and it's, yeah. it's inevitably part of the process that is always with you. I don't think we should not do it on an annual basis for that reason. Yeah. We just had a similar conversation around single plans and with um, Eric, and then we had one that even followed up between Michael Gonzalez and Cynthia White, and we're trying to figure out how best to help our sites with the single plans aligned to the board focus goals, aligned to the budget piece. and. What we walked away with is that, and I think this is probably um, the best way to go forward, is that those plans, and I would suggest even our board focus goals, are very, very similar all the time because we, you know, you don't change that dramatically in a district and you want to start something that's really got a lot of power behind it and keep with it and you keep tweaking it. So those plans are just alive and we adjust them as we go. And so really we're talking about you know, at this time of the year and then we start you know, in the fall, we're looking at the next school year as far as helping sites start thinking about their school plans and the budget and all of that. So we're really proactive in looking ahead and monitoring as we go because we don't want to work a whole year with our site plan in place and just because it's written, you know, or it's on our on online, if it's not working, we need to change right now. We need to pull out that intervention program and put something else in that we believe is going to have more success. Well, and actually, I think you raise a good point related to the point that Ms. Malikoff brought up, and that is each, each year or each time you go out the, the focus goals, they are an iteration of what preceded them. And, mm -hmm. and there are elements here that are strongly connected to the first set of board focus goals that I ever saw years ago. Yeah. I think the other discussion we had is that with the development of the single plans and the budget development calendar and the board focus goals all being aligned, then basically you can have access to all your financial resources in a more holistic manner to basically drive whatever the board's goals are in the district initiatives. Right now we're kind of out of sync and this would cycle everything up. And I think the other key piece is that although we, we get our public data, you know, in August or, you know, end of July or certainly share with the public in August how we did on our STAR tests, um, we should know, and starting next year, we should know a lot more clearly how we're doing. It shouldn't be a big surprise. I mean, that is a really important part of it and our goals, but it really we shouldn't be basing everything and say we can't really make any adjustments to our plan because in August we're going to find out how we did. We really should know long before then. Well, an, an example would be one of the goals is to increase um, participation across the spectrum in like AP classes, for example. Well, we should be able to know that by September. Did that happen? And if it didn't happen to the extent that we want, what can we do uh, for, for example, at San Marcos, what could you do at the semester. Um, there are things that could be put in place during the school year, so it would be great to be working at that level. That's true. Um, that, actually, that was one of the things that I appreciated about the um, websites that you forwarded. 
was the, the notion that a number of districts, at least a couple on that you had listed, um, have a mid-year report so that there can be some changes. And so I think if we adopted a, a sort of a cycle like we're talking about, it would also make it easier for us to implement something like that. So mid-year would be? Their mid-year, I think, was March, wasn't it? Yeah. Because I presume that they probably have a, a September report on, on things like the STAR. Mm -hmm. So, and mm -hmm. how that works out. Okay. I, I, I don't, I don't want to be the wet blanket here. I, I just think we should really focus on getting this done on an annual basis, on a regular cycle, and then take <laughs> it to the next level, which is, as you suggest, uh, I really think it would be a worthy goal just to institutionalize those two. Well, I, I'd be willing to <laughs> make a motion or, or if we need it, or just uh, have a board agreement that the first meeting in October will be, de will be used for uh, I think it Addressing might be focus special, or special, special, special meeting. Or special yeah, meeting, yeah. but instead, if, if you know, if we c were able to take a single plan special meeting out of there, and what? Well, Can we say the first week just, of October then? Well, let me just put it on the annual list of, of board meetings uh, because we have certain items that come up on a regular basis, whether they're budget adoption review, interim reports. So I'll just keep it on that annual list. With a final adoption in January, yes. a workshop in October. And but Brian, when you say uh, you keep it on the uh, annual list, where will you keep it on the annual list? A list of future agenda items, that's the list. And it will be in October as okay. uh, drafting okay. board focus goals in a special meeting. So we'll have to have a special meeting time. Now to the work. <laughs> would like to start on this an introduction well since it's been so long since we yeah. that we've done this um, I guess I I would like to share with everyone the process that we've followed in the past and and that is that the the student achievement goal which we have jokingly referred to as the mega goal um, has been with us for as long as I can remember in in some format um, and that's usually where we've started. And, and uh, then correct me if I'm wrong in that, generally what we've done in the past is each board member's come forward with at least one suggestion for a for focus goal that they have wanted to include, um, which is how we more or less get down to six. But it also doesn't make any sense to have many more than that because, you know, you can't keep that many balls up in the air and you want it to be, um, uh, connected closely to, you know, the LEAP plan and uh, the plans for student achievement. So uh, th I think that's, uh, you know, essentially how we've come to six. But I guess I would also want to remind people that if we are going to do this on an annual basis, that we shouldn't necessarily be reluctant to, you know, leave one thing off um, to, you know, come to something new since it is annual and if we need to get back to it we would get back to it well that that goes along with something i was thinking in in that if we adopt the mission statement with uh shared principles shared values um which we hadn't done in the past although in a way we did with the with the way we had the list um <coughs> excuse me then it seems reasonable that the folk that we wouldn't necessarily focus on every single one of those items every year. Um, that it would be reasonable to maybe have some things not be on the list one year and be on the list the next year. Doesn't mean that we're because I think of the focus goals as meaning the things we're going to especially focus right. on, not everything that we're going to do in the district. Um, and so it doesn't make sense in some ways. We've, I feel like we've been including in our focus goals everything that we want the district to do. Um, and so they don't, they're not really focus. They're, they're the operations of the district. Um, and if we 
adopted it as this year we're going to focus on these items and next year we'll focus on these other items um i i think that would maybe have more impact um, and allow us to actually create a focus on them rather than just you know, business as usual i i would also ask that we get a clear idea of the data indicators that that the board is looking for What I liked about the, some of the schools that I hadn't seen before was that they listed things that are actually going to get done, um, very specific things, which are your LEAP. Um, and a lot of the LEAP ones actually leap out and say, yeah, we can measure these things. Um, what I liked was also that they spe specified who was going to be responsible for it. Um, I just want to say that focus goals are different from action plans, and you're talking about action plans. I guess I, I like the and, action and plans. All, and then that's okay, <laughs> but then we need to have a discussion about are we, are we talking, what, what we want to talk about, I think, as a board, are focus goals, and then we need to turn to staff mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. say what's the action plan connected to the focus goals. And I absolutely agree. And in fact, we did that with these board focus goals that were adopted right. in May 2006. Uh, we developed an action plan. At one point, I gave you an, an update on how well we were doing on our progress on these. But of course, this is all a long time ago now. So I guess I'm kind of echoing a little bit Mrs. Harder's question, which is our comment. Um, my question would be, what is it that we want to accomplish today? I think we can't go into the action plan today. Oh, no. I think no, we, we, can make we probably won't goals. make it through the focus goals. So we're, we're going to try to narrow it down to six is what we're going to, the, the major focus goals. Does that sound Isn't like that, a good plan for today? Aren't we already on? Are there more than six now? No, there are six there are now. Yeah, so but we're going to try to come up with six, not necessarily the same ones. Not necessarily the same ones, but I certainly don't think we'd want the list to be longer, but it could be shorter. Correct. Yes. All right, so uh, who wants to jump in with some suggestions? Well, I, I think that we should um, spend some time reviewing the student achievement goal. Certainly, I'd like to, you know, <laughs> keep mm -hmm. that as our, our first and, and primary goal. And we may want to change some of the bullets and, and wordsmith some of the rest of it, but I, I think that uh, we want to remain focused on that. I think given our uh, report uh, last Tuesday evening, I w want to include a statement about uh, English learner success as well. Um, and the rest of the others, uh, special education I would like to keep, but I think that it could use some changes. The rest of the others I think could bear some, some uh, changing or just uh, you know, setting them aside wholesale. And I guess the first suggestion I would make on that one uh, would be uh, staff recruitment and retention, not because I don't think it's important, but because we're in a holding pattern right now. It might be a, a focus goal that we'd want to get to in two years when we've got increasing elementary enrollment or something. But I think for right now, I, I could set that one aside so that we might focus on something else. Mm -hmm. I don't know how the board, board members feel. I agree. Um, don't like to say that, but I, no, yeah. I well, no, it's yeah. still a goal of the district, and it's actually, it would be in our shared values, but, um, but in terms of a focus this coming year, I see your point in the fact that we are not, um, we're not hiring many new teachers or staff members at this point. And it may come under something else, but in part. Okay. Um, Do you want to keep going? Mrs. Harder? <laughs> uh, no, I'd love to hear from others, and, and actually if, if uh, we want to start working on the actual wording to start with student achievement, I think we need a, probably a fair amount of staff input. But I don't know if there are others that people want to su uh, uh, suggest uh, eliminating or adding. Well, refocusing, oh. maybe. Well, refocusing. I have some, I mean, I, have, I think the issue of diversity is huge. Um, in terms of the climate that w that is created on campuses, um, and 
to some extent staffing. Um, but those, it's possible that that could fall into a um, action plan for student achievement. Yes. So it depends on how we want to focus it. I definitely agree that student achievement and English learner success should be top priorities. Um, in light of the data that we have seen, those areas are, are key. Um, I think the others, special education is, is uh, I agree with Ms. Harder that there are some, that I would definitely make some changes in there. Um, I think revenue enhancement and budget reporting are things that we're basically going to be working on. Um, just, it's just the nature of the beast that we have to deal with those. So I, I agree that the first two are really keys for, for us to look at. And we, we might break it down a little bit in terms of the ways in which we address, whether it's academic, mm -hmm. socioeconomic, um, or I, I'm sorry, um, emotional, behavioral, psychological, whatever. And I just had one other that I wanted to throw out. I've got no wording associated with it. But we have had as a board focus goal in the past um, communication issues in general. And I would very much like to bring that back as a board focus goal for a very specific reason. Number one, I think there is a critical need. Um, I'm, I'm always amazed, and I've had this conversation before with, with Dr. Sarvis, that the board may make a decision and a month or two later, you know, particular policy, someone at a school site will say, now, what did you guys ever do about such and such? And you just want to smack your head and say, you know, word never got back. Mm -hmm. And I think we've made tremendous strides in the communication piece. I think the institutionalization of, of, of the e-news um, and a number of other pieces have been, ha have made a big difference. And I'm wondering if we make that a focus, if we can't, you know, create those final pieces or add those final pieces that will get us to where we need to be. The feedback loop to the come loop? back to, oh, yeah. <laughs> to come back yeah. to us as well. Casting a broader net and trying to close the loop, yeah. Okay, so add communication. Well, um, shall we start with student achievement? Well, then? Wait a minute. does anyone have anything else, another area? I, I thought we needed to, number four, sort of change that focus a little bit in, in that we have the disposition of our properties to deal with, and that's a pretty immediate goal. Well, I'm, I'm wondering if four and six, uh, you know, something having to do with, um, you know, our finance department can be combined. Mm -hmm. Yes, that makes sense. In some way. Just to fiscal services or? Yeah. But somehow put in there, it's, it's the disposition of Tatum and Hidden Valley, but also kind of renting properties and um, enhancing our revenue through those. I certainly, I have some specific suggestions when we get to that point. Um, absolutely. So all that in there. Mm -hmm. um, when you said diversity, I almost, I, I kind of want to have a separate thing perhaps for that rather than putting it in with student achievement and actually kind of dealing <coughs> with that more. I don't object to that. Um, I was noting it under whether or not we needed to keep the issue of staff recruitment and retention um, in the sense of creating more diversity among our staff. Um, and I, that was th the part that I was saying I think could fit, uh, might fit into one of our strategies. It might not, it might, we might wanna have a, a separate uh, Focus goal about that. I meant more about student achievement, and it, I guess my focus here is in relation to the English learning. It's not just the English learner success, but it's broader than that. Yes, it is, and I and I, I have to tell you to be honest, I'm a little torn as to whether I think it should be a separate fo focus goal or whether I think it should be included in the other focus goals because. Um, my, uh, my sense is that, uh, s sort of, as Mr. Smith said earlier, what gets measured gets attention. And we don't, m we have not measured diversity in our district. 
we have measured student achievement. And so it tends to get more attention, more direct attention. Um, and we pay more attention to whether we have achieved an outcome. So I'm part of me likes the idea of having it as a separate focus goal because it makes it very clear, it makes it very explicit. But part of me thinks that it would get more attention if we put it in a measurable focus goal. Can I make a suggestion? If we had if we had one of those gigantic post-it boards in front of us, we could write diversity at the top of it and put it in a box to consider when we get through some of these others. Do we want to go back to it and have a, an explicit goal? Or do we feel that in addressing some of the others, we've also included it? Well, you know, obviously there are currently specific sub goals under student achievement. So the question is, do those get pulled out into a separate one? And we can think about right. that mm -hmm. as we go right. through. Mm -hmm. And just put, maybe we can just circle those ones as ones we may want to pull out and to put a separate unit. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. Yeah. All right. So shall we get started on? Um, I'll note that we've just been an hour. Um, we're just getting started, it feels like. Can I make a suggestion for, for moving on? Yeah. That we try to come up with a draft for student achievement before we break today um, because we're going to have to come back to this anyway. We want to hear from Dr. Noel, who may have a very specific suggestion about an addition to the list. Um, I uh, would like to come up with some wording over communication. There's other wordsmithing that we've talked about. Um, what if we try and get through the student achievement? I'm, I'm all for going ahead. I just wanted to make sure that since I started it with, <laughs> with an hour. That can, we, um, can we set a time limit, though, for how long we're going to spend additional time? Five o'clock. Five o'clock sounds good? Sure. Okay. We can get pretty far by five. I, I'd love it if, if Dr. Sarvis and Ms. Sawaski could uh, lead us through this one and make some suggestions and then board members can react. We found a number of these to be very useful, uh, specifically those that deal with the state accountability uh, system, the API system, and the federal accountability system, AYP, even though we don't know what the future of that is with no child left behind. Uh, but they are uh, very specific, they're measurable, they're things that matter on a number of levels. There are, uh, well, you, in the past there was an interest in uh, English learner success to the extent that we decided to set a separate objective or a separate goal area just for that. And I'm wondering, given our past discussions, whether we don't have that same interest for the achievement gap and underachieving, uh, well, at this point, our, the subgroup that we looked at last was Latino students, but but about achievement gap issues. Uh, so I would make that suggestion as a possibility as another separate area. Okay, so, so we can circle that too. That those might be pulled out of student achievement, for example. Do you? I think it's in the <laughs> is is that different? No, mine's exactly the same. <laughs> I just, just got the one that had more gaps. It's just so it's formatted easy to write differently, and I'm sitting here oh. thinking, "Wow, this is great." I'm on a I was, I was <laughs> looking at the <laughs> at the one pager here. I'm looking at the one with lots of gaps on it, so that I could uh, write all over it. I'm looking at the one if that I was make, in our board mm -hmm. packet. So you're suggesting a second. Uh, another goal as being um, the, about the achievement. Well, if we have student achievement and we have the, the primary indicators out of the state accountability bad. system and the federal accountability system, and we have uh, separate indicators for uh, for the achievement gap and separate indicators for English learner success. Can we go back? I mean, tie some of these leap go, um, items in here. I mean, is this? Are these things we could actually measure in here as well? Well, Robin well, Swaski and I have been talking about that. Yeah, uh, definitely we can. And and when I I've been looking at the current student achievement goals, and I some of them absolutely you can measure. I mean, the AYP and API, as Brian mentioned, are you know direct indicators because we get those for our subgroups. So some of these 
as far as, you know, well, even kids passing the high school exit exam, but reducing achievement between the disparities, the, the achievement gap. I mean, all of that is indicated through our reports with AYP and API. So I, I see this kind of a little bit jumbled in, in that some of them can be monitored clearly and some of them overlap and combine with each other. I would suggest that we have fewer of these bullet things because many of them are pointing to the same thing. Well, I, I'm wondering, yes, I agree with that, um, but I'm also wondering, some of them are focused on secondary, some not, and I'm wondering if they can be divided up um, according to elementary, junior high school, and high school. And I'll tell you the reason why I ask that. It's not because the overarching uh, student achievement goals would be different and some would apply to all, but I'm wondering if for instance, for junior high, um, well, I, I'm looking at one of the, not, not junior high for high school, I'm looking at one of the specific goals, increasing participation across the demographic spectrum in advanced courses and academies. And I'm wondering uh, uh, that maybe we want to incorporate that in some way under English learner success, or I, I don't know, but I'm wondering if a more uh, doable goal would be to say all high, well, we have all high school students prepare to pass the high school exit exam, mm -hmm. but all high school students complete the UC, uh, CSU A through G requirements. Mm -hmm. If you completed all those in four years, then that, I think, would, by corollary, increase the number of students taking higher level classes. Mm -hmm. But. Yeah, I, I would like to add that. I would like I to add it. I wouldn't I would like not, it to substitute. I wouldn't want it to substitute. And in fact, for me, what I'm interested in for all of these is showing, is being more targeted. And so um, if we're going to talk about number five, increasing participation across the demographic spectrum in advanced courses and academies, when we get those um, from Dr. Hayden, if, if, if it's successful, if it's even increased by one student, it goes from red to black. And and too many times we see it as red, we haven't achieved it, but um, even increasing by one student for me is too low of a target. And I think that I would like to hear from staff what, for 0809, what would be a reasonable target, an increase of 5%, an increase of 10% in these classes? That's the kind of thing that I want to get to. For, for 0809, I want to know what should we be asking our um, you know, counselors and administrators and, and, and teaching staff to strive for? Um, and that's what I'd like to see for number five. Well, and given that the numbers are so low in many cases, mm -hmm. I mean, the percentage of increase could be even higher. It could because be. it may only represent a few students. It could be, but for I kind of see this as a little bit of an experiment to see, um, and so, uh, I, I don't want to overreach um, this, just this first few months of this particular one since we're going to be addressing 0910 the, um, pretty quickly. But, but going back to your comment about making a more focused, I would actually like to see it say increasing Latino participation because that is the population that we're talking about. Could we say underrepresented students instead of Latino? Because sometimes it could be females in certain programs. It, it could be special ed students that are, have uh, just you know, vision or hearing problems, that kind of thing. Um, and so I, I personally would like it to be a little broader. Obviously, it, it, it largely addresses do, Latino students. Do we have gate classes, AP classes, honors classes, or, or at, IB or academics, or I'm sorry, academies that don't have enough s female students. We do, we do, right? Um, or that work very hard to work really hard to maintain. Some do. I, some I'm not. Do. I guess I'm. I'm not. I wasn't articulating my question the way that I really meant it. Do we have any that don't have enough female students that do have? A significant number of Latino students. I I doubt it. I don't know, but I know that that females are um, underrepresented in certain kinds of, and probably males oh. are underrepresented in certain kinds of AP classes as well. 
actually the Health Academy at San Marcos not only is high high numbers of young women, but also pretty high numbers of, of Latino young women. Okay. So I, that's an example, although it's certainly slants toward <laughs> a gender bias. Um, okay. I, no. Yeah. You can, you can come up to the podium. Okay, I wanted to mention that um, we do have indicators on our career technical education pathways that show that we do, we aren't meeting our targets for career technical education pathways in places such as um, Construction Academy. That would be something we have mm -hmm. always had more males in the Mat Academy, more females in the Vada Academy. Um, the robotics is doing quite well. Mm -hmm. um, but in the other engineering sector at Dos Pueblos, we would have more males than females. So there are places, there are two, there are two mm -hmm. engineering tracks at Dos Pueblos. One is the robotics track and the other one is an ROP track. Okay, okay so it's mm -hmm. the second one that I'm referring to. So, okay. so is there a suggestion mm -hmm. from staff if we wanted to put in a specific target for underrepresented students. That's actually a goal. We need to meet those targets for but, technical education. But what, what is the goal? For, for 0809, what would the goal be? Not just increasing, because increasing could mean by one. I would like it to be a little bit, uh, a little bit more ambitious than increasing by one. Um, I'm going to refer to this <laughs> yeah. Davis Hayden. Could we invite Davis, Davis Hayden to yeah. speak to that? If you remember the uh, goal focus sheets when I did the presentation on Latinos, you saw that mm -hmm. there was not a single one of them that actually really went above 25%. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, a simple goal would be that all these categories go above 25%. Uh, and, and I mean, 25% is not necessarily where we want to get to in the end because we have, in many cases, more Latino students than we have white students. But if we could get all of them to be above 25%, uh, that would be a good goal. For 0809. Yeah, honors class, AP class. Given that the schedules have already been set, and um, I, that's No, that's I don't think why you can do it for 0809. You'd have to be for 910. For 0910. So what's right. a, a, a reasonable goal for 0809? That given that things, hopefully everybody's been working on it, um, and so there will be an increase. We may not make it, yeah, but is there a reasonable well, since, like you say, the schedules have actually all, they're all in the works right now, and it would be hard to make a huge changes, but you can still make changes now in the schedule. Well, the, the, but this is an issue that we've been pushing this year. I mean, yeah, we should been, expect to see those changes We should changes expect to see growth. Month. I just don't want to, you know, yes. I wouldn't want to shoot for 25% when we, they can't well, focus on it. Many of them are at 20%, and mm -hmm. some are at 19%, mm -hmm. and some are at 23%. So I, I think, I, I would still say, let's try and push that they, they go back to the high schools. They we're mainly looking at high schools here. Go mm -hmm. back to high schools and say, make the big push to get 25% representation. Okay. Well, maybe it, we it should probably be growth model oriented. Mm -hmm. I mean, there will be schools and programs where we're nowhere near. There will be schools and programs where we're pretty close, and, and, uh, and we either make that goal, don't make that goal, and uh, if, if it's more growth model oriented, if we look for a certain percent change, mm -hmm. uh, then I think we have greater assurance of continued progress toward that. Depending on the size of the program, I don't know what that would look like. For instance, in some of the programs you have maybe only 50 kids, and if you have, this, you know, 35 of them white and only 10 or 50, 10, let's say, Latino, then if it's 5%, one, one Latino kid would do it. So I, I don't know. Perhaps, um, uh, perhaps over the next uh, four weeks, uh, we could look at data and we could come back with some recommendations for you. We can come back with some targets for that you. That would yes. be great. Yes. In, in fact, I, I, had, I took what you said to heart about uh, making suggestions here. If I might just mm -hmm. launch into this. Um, Right off the top of my head, I would set overall achievement goals. I would set one for state API. State API includes mm -hmm. kids across the spectrum and includes higher level students as well as the bottom students. 
I would include uh, the federal AYP subgroups and uh, that also includes disparities among student subgroups. I, I'm sorry, yes. Dr. Sarvis, I missed the beginning of your statement. I was oh, sidetracked. Well, you would include these in? Uh, I, un, uh, as you're suggesting to complete, to keep our uh, number three, under, is that what you're saying? Oh, well, uh, the, the first goal mm -hmm. area would be student achievement. And mm -hmm. under student achievement, I would include a okay. specific bullet for state API a specific bullet for AYP subgroups and, and uh, achievement disparities among student subgroups. Um, uh, at this point, in fact, Davis, you may want to correct me on this, but you know, almost all of our students do pass the exit exam, and the exit exam results are uh, particularly important at the high school level because the state AYP model relies on the 10th grade score. and. Uh, it's not that I don't think the, all students passing the exit exam is important, but in terms of relative importance, I would rather pull in students completing A through G courses. Well, and actually, I would agree with you that it's that the, the high school exit exam, the classes surrounding the support of students who don't pass as 10th graders, that's institutionalized now. I'm not yes. sure why we want to keep it in our windshield. Yes. Um, and if I may go further. Can I ask a question about the yes. A through G requirements? Is that, for ROP students, would they want, is that something they choose to do or is that something they choose not to do on purpose? Well, even for ROP students, many of those capstone courses are at the college level and we have far too many going to college and, and having to take remedial courses in City College. Uh, it's going to be important to us to ensure that that uh, well, and also I guess access you're operating for all on students. the assumption that an ROP class would not count toward an A through G requirement in many instances some, it could count as do. an elective yeah. well I get I am yes is the goal to have all students take the A through G to complete to all, the, all students right. to complete A through G what would the target be well, how many students currently do it right. so what would we our goal be for sure. 0809 I mean, sure. that's, uh, that's the kind of information I would like to have okay. on our focus right. goals. If we if 50 percent of the students do it now, can our goal for 0809 be that we get it up to 60 percent, with the ultimate goal being that Well, and again, it would, I would, I want to see the subgroups for that. Oh, yeah. I think, yeah. Right. I think you'd also have to take into consideration if you're putting that goal into place, it's only going to be your ninth grade class that you're setting the goals for, because you can't ask students who haven't taken the A through G requirements they would have needed to take in ninth grade, they're not going to come, you know, this past year, they wouldn't have completed, be able to complete. Like four years of college prep English is a requirement. So they're not going to make that if they're in a transition class that is not receiving college credit. Well, and that scheduling issue rears its head because it would require more math and science classes, for instance. That's right. Um, well, well except, that, mm -hmm. except that we're not talking about imposing a requirement. We're talking about setting a goal. Setting a goal. Um, yeah. So I think even, for example, uh, let's assume, I don't know. I, I don't even know what the ballpark figure would be, but let's just say 40% of the students who are, who are seniors this year would not meet the A through G goal uh, requirements for graduation. But they... Some of them might be relatively close right. if they took certain classes this year as opposed to other classes this year. So we wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't advocate making it a requirement that they have to do that, but we could certainly make it a goal that we will encourage them to do that, that the, the counselors might um, at least sort of uh, make them aware that they have those choices and that they would be meeting those goals if they, if they, depending on what, what they choose to take. Right. Well, and correct me if I'm wrong, Dr. White, Santa Barbara High counselors went through this exercise and discovered a lot of kids who were really close mm -hmm. to fulfilling their A through G requirements, and they were able to make adjustments in their schedules so that they did graduate college ready. Yeah, that's po that is easily done. It's, it ta it's very time consuming because it is printing all transcripts and going through them one by one. There isn't a mass query that we can do. so. It's, it's an ongoing monitoring process and an ongoing recruiting and um, ongoing monitoring, so it, it 
we do have a four-year plan. It's checking off each year that your students under your caseload as a counselor are completing those courses We're and passing. passing them with a C. See, that's the other thing when we do the um, statistics for you for UCCSU completion rate, it's with a grade of a C or better. Right. So those are the statistics that the, ta the state collects, but you need to determine whether if you have kids taking the A through G, if they're getting a D, they're still passing that course. So is, is that part of your goal? Do you want to meet the state requirement of a C or better or not? Well, and actually that raises the fundamental issue of if you can't set up ARIES for any kind of inquiry like that, then we could be creating a goal that's going to be impossible to monitor. Yeah. You're right there. Uh, Cynthia is also right that it's it's a difficult it's a moving target, and and so to say that a kid's on track it doesn't mean they actually are going to make it, and so it's a complicated goal to to put. Now I think if you made goals for ninth grade students that are ready to start the process of A through G requirements, that might be better. Well, uh, let me address that a little bit, and I know the requirements change because it depends on what's on the A through G course list for that year. Uh, but you know, it's a CBEDS reporting requirement, and we need to get this down. We need to get really good at it, so uh, we need to figure out how to do it. Well, then maybe that's the goal, to okay. find a way to track the Perfect. completion of A through G requirements of our high school students. Mm -hmm. That's a great goal. <laughs> may, may I continue on my list? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I would also have a goal area for English learners. I would have a third goal area for uh, separate, uh, well, for participation. Uh, the, the participation um, uh, ideas that we've talked about in advanced courses. And I tend to pull that off into a separate area uh, because I, I see that as looking different than these achievement indicators. If you look at the other bullets under student achievement that we already have in place, the very first bullet ensuring high levels of instruction and in core subjects in e at each grade level um, is more of a process uh, and frankly it's very difficult to get at. As you know in my report to you, uh, we went out to the sites and we pressed them for uh, for data on that, and they came back and said, yes, 100% uh, <laughs> every course, all of our teachers say we're all doing that. Well, I have a suggestion yes. then. If one of the ways that we're trying to ensure high levels of instruction is through um, teachers organizing around specific yeah. subject matter and specific grade levels, so what if the goal is all teachers at all levels or in all departments are part of a professional learning community that meets Would on that a regular good? basis. Okay. So oh, that's... Oh, Wayne just left. Uh, <laughs> oh, uh, well, still yeah, okay. I, I would think that, uh, yeah, that okay. he would be fully behind that, mm -hmm. uh, but we'd want to talk to him about it. Uh, in fact, that really embraces one of the initiatives that we have a lot of support for across the district and we have a lot of data for across the nation. Mm -hmm. Actually, I just, Lane and I just had a conversation about that, and yeah. he is, um, uh, should I say this out loud? Yeah, he, he is really um, moving forward and wanting to put that into negotiation language around having that be a part of the school day and getting it embedded in the work day for teachers. So, well, I mean, we don't want to assume. I mean, no, we don't want to assume, but, yeah. but obviously the teachers union is very much behind collaboration and PLCs. Well, <laughs> you know, the teachers are our strength in this system, and they, they're operating at high professional levels, and the, the only way in the end we really move ahead uh, is through our teachers working in collaboration with each other and, and with administrators. The second bull, I love the idea. So wait, the, we're, we're switching out. I, I've got to assume, first of all, that nobody has a problem with that intro paragraph, that nobody wants to change the introductory no. paragraph to student achievement. Well, that I, can stay the same. I, I think, well, go ahead. Dr. Sharvis, did you suggest taking out the closing the gap part? Yeah, I thought that was going to be a separate. Uh, 
um, goal in the first paragraph. It mm -hmm. depends on what separate goal areas we have first. And I would rather start with the indicators and then go back to that paragraph. <coughs> okay. So okay. the first, the first number one is being eliminated and replaced with all. Can you repeat exactly what you said, Mrs. Harder, or no. your suggestion? <laughs> well, did I can know, but if, if I can go home, would still be I, mean, I don't know. Problem yeah. was taking notes. I mean, yeah. I can certainly propose some language. Do you mean number one student what? achievement would be replaced? It would be, yeah, instead of having it just be ensuring high levels of instruction and core subject at each grade level, oh, I see. Mrs. Harder's suggestion was that I each teacher or that every teacher would be oh. part of I thought of you a were suggesting a separate I goal know. area, though, like no. goal no, no, number no. four. No, no, no. This would be no. a bullet under student achievement instead oh, of. Okay. The, the question that I had is. I see. Oh, I'm sorry. You guys just aren't numbered. You have bullets. No, the I've ones, got the ones, <laughs> I see. the ones that were in our pa our the packet that's today. The one contracted is bulleted, and the one that's was in our packet bullets. is numbers. Uh, yeah. Okay. So, numbered. sorry. That's that's where I'm at. The um, question that I have is, changing bullet number one to uh, participating in a PLC to me sounds like an implementation strategy or, a, or a, you know. A it's very targeted and specific. Yeah, and it doesn't sound like the goal. The, to me, the goal remains that we have high levels of instruction. That seems more like a strategy for how to achieve that goal. And that's, I think what we, that's what the focus goals, the, the sub bullets are because the primary focus of the board and staff members continues to be improving student achievement. And then we list out what are sp specific things that we are going to do, what are we going to complete this coming year. Well, okay, then, then I think maybe we should change that in, um, initial paragraph because it says progress will be shown in each of the following areas. Mm -hmm. To me, that doesn't connote uh, implementation strategies. It, it, is the broader areas that we're going to be looking at that affect student achievement. Mm -hmm. And a broader area that affects student achievement is instruction, the, the level of instruction that students get. A broader area is data and how data affects instruction. Mm -hmm. How does data affect instruction? Well, that's the the number two, number improving data-driven data instruction and the use of data oh, to assess well content standard proficiencies. Mm -hmm. So, sort of. the rest you, you do don't not. want it to say prog progress will be shown in each of the following areas, or well, it seems it, to me that if we're going to par participation in PLCs is going to be d difficult to measure, uh, or or runs the risk of being measured at only uh, a surface level. Um, just uh, the number of people who meet in PLCs, the number of times they meet, uh, that, uh, w well, what's happening across the nation is that almost everything's being called a professional learning community, and it's sort of like what cooperative learning used to be. Uh, I mean, it came in all forms, and everyone called it cooperative learning, and some called it cheating, uh, and, and others found very deep levels of learning uh, that were facilitated by other students. In this case, what we're looking for is a very deep level of discussion about, uh, about student uh, progress, about uh, best ways to teach, what happens when students aren't learning and keeping pace, what we do in a systemic way. I mean, there are a number of other indicators about PLCs that uh, we could pull off of our beginning of the year presentation from just two years ago uh, that would give us ideas ideas about whether we have um, uh, collaborative and cooperative agreements in place and whether we're following those. But I'm concerned about just targeting PLCs, for example. I, I, that's fine. I'm, I'm open to suggestions that yes. you want to bring back. I was responding to the fact that ensuring high levels of instruction in core subjects at each grade level it's, by your own uh, admission I, I don't know. 
I don't know how nebulous. to measure that. Right. Yes. Okay. So I was thinking of. Well, I was some... thinking of just taking it out for the time being. <laughs> okay. <laughs> It seems like the student no. progress is going to be an indicator that high-level instruction is going on if all students are yes. moving forward. No, I do think we need to come back to PLCs, though, or in well, one way or another. Dr. Uh, we have been um, collecting agendas and minutes on the PLCs, and yes. so um, we can look for a spe specific parameters that you're talking about if that's something you'd like us to do. I have to say, I mean, without casting any aspersions, I think that data alone might be extremely helpful um, since there are some schools that have invested themselves in this process, some not, some grade levels that have, um, some not, some departments that have and have not. So I, I don't know whether um, the inquiry and having, you know, that bright mm -hmm. light shown on that particular area might might motivate uh, uh, it, it would be very steps. helpful to us in fact I, personally i would even consider it a separate goal area can i just ask a question about the process once once we identify the bullets under each goal or i'm sorry and yeah under each focus goal or the numbers whatever however we're looking at them then staff is going to take those and create an action plan for each of those, is that correct? Yes. Or hopefully they'll look at the leap and so, tie it into it. But some of these yes. don't really so what I'm take any action, it's yeah. just a test score. Well, except that the test score is, I mean, the, the goal is not, the, the goal is to exceed. So how to get there. So the action will be, what are we gonna do to make that happen? But that is the leap. Yeah, some of it is the leap, some of it is, Single site plan. Yeah. Some of its uh, leap. Yes. Yeah. Um, so what I'm thinking is the bullets themselves don't necessarily have to be measurable. The well, well, no, maybe that's not true. If it's not measurable, maybe it's not true. That's maybe it ought to be back in the paragraph. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, I think it would be. Helpful. Yeah, I think it does need to be measurable. For the, yes, for the goals, if you're really going to target on particular goals, it should be the stuff that you want us to come back that you're going to monitor. Okay. And then so what are you going to ask for three times a year or whatever? Right. I'm also pretty confused here with this because something like AVID, um, how many classes of AVID do we teach? So easy to kind of, mm -hmm. something yeah. we could easily find out. Um, is that a strategy? Is that a goal? Is that a I don't know. within that would be oh. increasing the number of AVID classes by a certain percentage? Yeah, would that be kind of thing. The direction you would want to go would be in. a strategy. If you were going to, and also strategy. within the AVID program, even way down in the elementary level, there are markers that and targets that we're meeting across a large spectrum, not just the strategies, but you know the achievement of the students. There's a lot of things within AVID that we have to. Um, we have to work toward, correct, Cynthia? Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think we gave you a report on our certification, and so it's we would want to ask our schools to move up one certification level each year, and may or maintain their certification because okay. they're being monitored by AVID itself. And, and I think that would be a very worthwhile bullet to put under student achievement, or if we make a separate one for. Uh, reducing, closing the achievement gap um, in there as well. The um, summer in AVID will be on avidization. So in other words, mm -hmm. um, taking the Wicker strategies, the writing, inquiry, collaboration, and reading strategies across all core subject areas. So that's the focus area that we have for this AVID training at the end of the month for, for district-wide. Okay. Um, can I ask on the second bullet, which is currently improving data-driven instruction and the use of data to assess content standard proficiencies, um, is that a bullet that needs to stay in? There must be, you must have targets, for example, for Gradeworks and EduSoft um, <clears throat> for next year. Um, how could we word this so? Well, I really like yeah. that you had this goal because mm -hmm. this goal, the way it's written, helped us with implementation because mm -hmm. it was a 
one of our foci mm -hmm. was implementation. At this point, all of our English learners are being benchmarked mm -hmm. and data is being analyzed in PLC. Mm -hmm. So that's, I, I feel as though last year where we were almost rehearsing because there is so much involved in shifting a paradigm from just giving individual tests to giving common tests on a common pacing schedule. And it was difficult. We had to, we'd get panicked calls from schools saying, we're not gonna, we're not gonna finish this week. We can't get the scanning done. Is that okay? And it had to be okay for last year. But this year, our goals are to make our targets on our benchmarks and benchmark the week that everybody else is so that it is a common pacing guide, a, a common benchmark, common scanning, common looking at the data, analyzing the data, sharing the strategies, and then, you know, adjusting the instruction. So could you suggest to us the way that sentence should be worded for 0809? Just what I said? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I remember that exactly. <laughs> that we're... Yeah, Im improving data-driven instruction and reaching our targets I would for say benchmarking assessments. We're only benchmarking at this point mm -hmm. commonly across the district for English learners. Mm -hmm. um, next year, our goal is to commonly assess for mathematics across the district as we've just adopted materials. So. Mm -hmm. It's adding a subject area per year is realistic. So add mathematics? Correct. Well, as a well, goal, as a goal as a it might goal. be increasing the number of common assessments. That's what I was going to say. Okay. Or expanding Correct. common we assessment have, we have, areas. We have common assessments at individual schools. They're not just not at this point district-wide common assessments right. for we'd, social studies or science. We'd like to give you a regular report to show you what we have in place uh, at various schools in various subject areas uh, and then across the district. So if we said something like improving data-driven instruction and the use of data to assess content standard proficiencies and expanding or through the expansion of through the expansion of com district wide, wide common, common assessments. assessments okay and do we want to name specific areas that anticipate because we can because it's annual we could accept that that if we're talking k-12 in elementary we do have common assessments now that will be implemented across all english language arts and mm -hmm. math okay both And Dr. Cyrus, you were saying that we should keep the third bullet as it is. Um, actually, I would break it out differently. I'd, I'd have a bullet, a separate bullet for the state um, accountability system for academic performance index. And I would make the um, exceeding federal AYP adequate yearly progress goals and the uh, reduction of disparities among student subgroups, uh, uh, the same bullet area. Uh, would you like wording on that? So wait, you're suggesting that three, the first half of three and four be combined? Uh, yes. Okay, so yes, do you have wording on it? No, not yet. <laughs> All right, well, draft wording on that. Do we have to say anything about PI schools in here? Well. Um, is that going to be a, I mean, obviously that is something that's always right in front of us. Is that something that we need to uh, list separately as a? Well, whether schools become PI, whether our district in the elementary level gets out of pr program improvement is all related to whether we're meeting AYP and right. API. So I think it's a bit redundant. Right. And we already but talked. There are strategies to get schools out of PI that we've our right. whole district leap in elementary it, yeah. is all targeted on to that, program improvement. To that. So it, it just seems like we're kind of And Dr. Sarvis, when you're looking when you're thinking about suggested language for uh, reducing achievement disparities among student subgroups, um, again, I would love to see something targeted there so it's not just a general generic statement. a generic statement, but something like, you know, a percentage for 0809. Yes. Um, given that that is going to be, I mean, we will judge whether we were successful or not based on the 
09 star testing ultimately. Um, so there's, there's time this school year to address it. Um, but if there could be, again, a suggested percentage okay. or amount. We can do that. And I guess we, what we want is we would want an increase in our lower yes, scoring. We, we, we do not want to just want to see an decrease the gap in, because, yeah. yes. Good. And then we talked, we talked about number five. And then number six, accelerating the performance of high achieving students. We could keep that in. We have not adopted the new gate plan at this point. And we, I mean, that is something that we will be doing. Do we need to keep that in at this point? Or is that um, something that's simply going to be addressed anyway? Is that a focus for 0809? I guess my question is um, how much do we need to be doing with that? I mean, we're going to adopt the, the new gate plan. Are we going to be focusing on other aspects of this? Is there going to need to be an action plan around this? If not, then I think it becomes kind of like some of the other things we said that we sort of got, we have it in hand and, and we're moving on, it's going to be addressed, but it's not necessarily, it doesn't necessarily rise to the level of a, a focus, focus goal, goal for this coming year. For this coming year, right? Yes. Because I could see there. It, there yes, are interesting it could be down the road. There are some things that are that mm -hmm. I'm thinking about, but maybe we could, if fellow board members are comfortable with that, that's something that we could remove for this 0809 year. That's fine with me. I mean, I I think we all do this with the proviso that we will come back. We may have second thoughts about some things. We have a, a, a colleague missing today. Mm -hmm. Um, and quite honestly, I think it was probably included uh, for political reasons because we were focusing on, you know, many for other political, different kinds of students. But also because I think that there's just been the sense of it needs to be something that's going to last more than a year rather than a, a yearly goal. Right. And, and if we can really dedicate ourselves to making this an annual review, then it's okay not to have it be right there, right? right well, now. and also I think if you include in that um, initial paragraph that uh, it's about pushing students to higher and higher levels of achievement mm -hmm. with a specific focus on particular kinds of students. Right. Yeah. Also, if we have a something have critical needs. specifically on the achievement gap, that implies, I mean, we may want to say that explicitly, that you want the higher group to continue to rise, right. you want the lower group to, right. to mm -hmm. rise as well, right. or more so. And then I just have a question again on number seven. We were saying that that maybe could go, but it's important to me that we see that on our, um, the, the focus goal information, that really nice um, chart that Dr. Hayden gives to us. And so I'm not sure if if it if well it should go or if it should be on there. And instead of preparing all students, it should be ensuring exactly. all students. That's what pass. I was going to say. If, if we're going to keep it, I want to change the preparing. Yeah, could we change it to ensuring all students pass the California High School exit exam? Or it becomes I'm under happy. one of the. Um, and it could come under an, another goal area. Yeah, we, number three, or whatever it was. It was well, the one it, about the testing uh -huh. because it becomes part of the testing. Well, and, and it actually is part of exceeding federal AYP. Right. Um, yeah. I'm sorry. So, so okay, but you meant bullet number or, or number item, three, yeah. three, not uh, not goal number three. I'm okay. Back with right. with Kate right. here, <laughs> the bullet. Okay. okay we we are now at five o'clock. Right. Um, we really didn't address the special ed. The rest of these. And I just on the special ed, I would really love to have district recommendation on um, what I'm sure that, that you have goals for the department just as you're coming in brand new. Um, if there are any recommendations that you could make at the board level for us to be looking at for focus goals for next year, that would be great. Not that you need to think about it right this instant, but when it comes back to us in August. Ms. McNeil already has plenty of thoughts about mm -hmm. that. <laughs> I do. I, um, <clears throat> excuse me, I've been sharing a few of my initial thoughts with Dr. Sarvis and Ms. Sawaski in regards to the focus for 
the special education department as we embark on a CCR review in 0809. Our school district will be reviewed federally um, in regards to our compliance for the special education department. We are insured because of the number of filed complaints with the Office of Hearing and Mediation in Sacramento and other things. We are insured that our department will have site level visits as well as a complete review of all of our files. That being said, I have really looked at a very strategic way that our apart department can align itself to ensure that we meet the high standard of the federal government as well as the state, but more importantly to ensure that we meet the needs of the students. So I would be most encouraged to come back in August and share that with the board. Perfect, because it sounds like we have some very specific goals that we need to attain for 0809. Can I add one more quick thing that is all over the LEAP and is secondary and elementary is really that pyramid of interventions because that's really addressing a lot of how we're, um, you know, targeting and monitoring the students who aren't at proficient. So you'd like to, in the student achievement section, you'd like to add a bullet that says every school will have an articulated pyramid of interventions? We could say it like that. It's really a district-wide system, too. We're yeah. trying to identify how to make it a structure within the system. I'd, I'd like you to consider a separate uh, professional learning community type goal that would include some of these process areas, um, a pyramid of intervention, uh, actually AVID courses, uh, courses that are designed for additional student support like AVID, uh, the common assessments, uh, of, of course the meetings, uh, because those are all strategies that are wrapped up in, uh, in what we've been uh, presenting and uh, what we will continue to present starting with our administrative in services next year and then uh, school level in services on on standards aligned, in, aligned instructional leadership. Uh, so it might be a, an easier way to package something uh, like that. Could be packaged under uh, something having more to do with teacher training and in-servicing um, as a heading. It, it could. I'm actually seeing it almost broader because when you have that professional learning community and you're really monitoring kids and you have your pyramid of interventions, it goes beyond academics. And everything we're trying to deal with, you know, uh, the even the recent the school culture piece <laughs> is all about yes. that. Well, I hope that when we see these again, that we can have a draft of like the student achievement section that we've been talking about, and then maybe a draft of what your recommendations are for Great. whatever this Great. section goal is, and then we can work and then on whatever there were other left. pieces that yeah. individuals were going to work on too. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Okay, well, it was productive. So our next meeting is um, in August 12th, I believe it is. Uh, when do we, d what do we do about this um, in coming back to this? Do you we'll, want to we'll, another we'll special meeting in August yeah. or? No. <laughs> well, or we could come back with the draft language at the meeting in October uh, if people want to wait that long and that would be the but that'll well, be the impetus. That'll be the 0910 then if we don't get it adopted. But, but if we follow, sure gonna, yeah, yeah. yeah, if we follow our schedule and see what demand we have on the first August meeting, which uh, I believe is already full, mm -hmm. uh, but then what demand we have for the second meeting, we can decide uh, between the board president and I uh, whether we need an additional workshop or whether we have time during a regular meeting to do that. It would be great yes. to do it at the second meeting in August because Dr. Malikoff will be back yeah. and um, and so th that would work out well if we okay. could. Okay. Yeah. We'll shoot for that. Okay. Thank you. All right. Well, we're adjourned. <laughs>